Hi, this is Michael Jones, Chairman and CEO of Caravel Concepts. Welcome to Market Insights, our weekly commentary on financial markets. Let's get started. So, the feedback that we've been getting from last week's video about price earnings ratios is great. Now I know what a PE ratio is and how it's calculated, but I don't know why I should care. How do I use PE ratios to evaluate different stocks or different stock markets that I might want to invest in? So, this week we're going to talk about what do PE ratios mean and how can you apply them? All right, so let's get just a quick recap. All right, a PE ratio is the price divided by the earnings. So in this case, we've got a stock that has a price of $10 a share and earnings of $1 a share, and that means a price earnings ratio of 10X. And we're gonna assume that in this example, we're entirely using trailing 12 month PE. So this is the last year's worth of earnings for this company. All right, now we have two other examples of PEs where this is a company that earns that same dollar, but instead of trading at $10 a share, they're trading at 20 for a PE of 20X. And this one is, whew, still earns a dollar, but it's trading at $40 for a PE of 40X. Now, your instinct might be, I wanna buy this one, because it's cheaper. And you know, we're all kind of acclimated at the Walmart and the Costco is that cheaper is better. But in the case of equity investments, there's always a reason why things are cheap. So, and by the way, I need to make it very, very clear that when I go through this example, it is an example. It's not intended to quantify as any particular stock or any particular markets. You know, it's just an example. So, when you see a stock trading at 10, when there's a lot of others at 20 and at 40, then the typical reason for that is that what the market is expecting from this particular stock, this is the earnings, this is time, and it thinks I'm not paying very much per dollar of earnings, which means I don't think earnings are gonna grow very fast. And not only do I not think earnings are gonna grow very fast, but some years are gonna be great and some are terrible. And some are great and some are terrible. And some are great and some are terrible. And the growth is inside a real roller coaster ride of good years and bad years. So not only does this company grow slowly, but it's really volatile and it makes me uncomfortable. Those are the kind of companies that tend to trade at low price earnings ratios. And right now you can think of banks and airlines and automobile companies. They tend to have earnings that fluctuate a lot with the economy. They don't tend to grow very fast over time and they tend to trade at very low PEs. Now, a PE like this, let's say this is close to the average PE in the marketplace. Well, in this case, what the market may be expecting is here's earnings, here's time, is, yep, that same kind of slow growth, but this is not very risky. It, you know, I kind of pretty sure that the growth is gonna be about where I hope it's going to be. And that's why I'm paying something close to an average price earnings ratio for this particular company. And this can be companies that are like consumer staples, uh, some pharmaceutical companies, some utilities, companies that don't tend to grow super fast, but they're predictable, they're reliable. They don't put you through this. They put you more through this, all right? And then last but certainly not least, companies that trade at above average price earnings ratios, well, what the market is expecting from them is lots of growth. They're thinking that this dollar is gonna be two next year, and it's gonna keep on going up and up, and it may be risky, it may be not, but the, but the important thing is that it's going to grow super fast. 
And you can imagine this is a lot of technology companies. They're all, you know, things like Microsoft and Apple and Google. They all tend to trade at price earnings ratios of higher than average, you know, at current markets, 35, 40, even 45 times earnings. All right. So which one's good? Which one do you want to buy? Well, the reality is, is that there tend to be different points in the cycle when different companies do better. So for example, if you were to ask me right now, now's not a bad time to be thinking about banks and airlines because you know, the last year has not been good. They've had to, their earnings have not been good. They're kind of down here because no one's been flying and banks have had to build big reserves because they feel like and they may have a lot of companies default and uh, then they'll have to charge off their loans. So when banks don't wait for companies to default to build up a reserve against future defaults. They do it now in anticipation of defaults that may come next year. But I think they may have overdone it. And I think as the COVID vaccine comes out into the marketplace, then there is uh, opportunity for airline travel to recover. So we might get one of these nice little swings up in earnings. Now you may think, well, the market knows this is gonna happen there. That's not gonna have any big impact on the price. And believe it or not, even though there's been a banking industry for 400 years, there's been an airline industry for 100 years, and we've seen this pattern over and over again, people are emotional. And when you go to a bad th time, they overreact. And when you get to a good time, they overreact. And if we're in a moment where we could go through one of these, that's a pretty good opportunity. By contrast, these steady eddy guys, 2020 was great for them. People loved predictability and companies that didn't fall apart just because you, know, you, you were uh, stuck at home. And in many instances, these companies benefited because you bought a lot of cleaning products, you bought a lot of the things that you, you know, they sell a lot of the things that you stay at home to use. And so they did really, really, really well. And when the economy recovers, people stop appreciating steady eddy and they start wanting more sex appeal in their, uh, in their portfolios. So now might be a good time to think about lowering your weighting here. And then, down here, these guys. So the challenge with paying a high price for earnings is if those earnings don't happen, then there's big downside because the earnings, if the earnings stay the same, but people decide growth is going down, this can go from 40 to 30 to 20. And that's a big drop in price, right? If you think about there's a real economic recovery coming next year, then is that really going to slow down the earnings for Google, for Apple, for Microsoft? Probably not. You know, and we think, and we'll talk about this in a future Market Insights, that we could build, be building a bubble. And people love technology stocks and sexy high growth stocks in a bubble. And so these are still things that I think should be a big part of a, of a good diversified portfolio. There's one last kind of PE that we really ought to talk about, even though it makes me super uncomfortable. And that's when the price is 800 over a dollar. And obviously what people are expecting there is just growth is going to be so fast you can't even imagine how fast these companies are going to grow. Otherwise, why would you pay 800 times current earnings? But there are tons of stocks out there that are trading at these kinds of levels. Now, here is where I do think there is a danger. If we have, even if we have a bubble, but if we have real economic recovery, some of the stocks that are trading at these kinds of insane levels are the stocks that people have just heard of because there was a COVID-19 pandemic. You know, um, things like, you know, uh, the video conferencing services that we're all starting to use, the video streaming services that we suddenly can't live without. Those are all great companies. They're going to be with us for a while, but are they going to be worth this as people start flying again, as people start going back to their normal 
day life. Remember, when you're paying this kind of earnings, it only takes a little bit of reduction in growth for people to freak out and the price to fall a lot. Now, the counter to that is we do think there could be a bubble next year. There's going to be a lot of money printing. Money printing follows these companies. But I'll confess my bias. I never, ever feel comfortable paying 800 times earnings or even 100 times earnings or even 60 times earnings. That just is counter to my basic philosophy of how to put money to work. So I should acknowledge that bias, but still say that if we have a real economic recovery, a lot of these guys are going to seem like a better deal with faster, with faster growth prospects potentially than some of these high flyers. And so I would say that this was a great place to be in a very speculative early phase of a bubble. And I think that's what we were had in 2020. As we move into the second phase of the bubble, where all the money printing from the Fed meets a real economic recovery and a story that helps validate higher prices, then these guys are going to stop being the darlings. And it's going to be more these guys and these. Thank you for joining us for Market Insights. We hope you found it helpful. If you'd like to see more of our research, you can subscribe at the link below, or you can go on our website, caravelleconcepts.com. Thanks.